Versus Virtus Pro coming your way here. You're watching ESL1 powered by Intel. And of course, this is the upper division of the Eastern European DPC League. But forget, this is the final series of the season. Yes, there will be tiebreakers, but they're like somewhat outside the season. This is the final scheduled series outside the season, and we're well into the draft of this second game. We're joined by Purge, Kyle Tigov here as well, and uh, the Phoenix Ursa coming out from Navi as they have to try something else again, because again, the Beastmaster Enigma is banned, Kyle. Well, I think more importantly, VP aren't changing anything. Mm -hmm. They are still using the same formula, and thus far, fortunately for Navi, their formulas this were, were Enigma and Beastmaster. They're still gone. Yeah. You can pick Lion and Offlaner all day if you're VP, and nobody's been able to beat it in this entire region. Yeah, I think the uh, interesting thing here is simply that VP are first pick in this game, but like you said, they still have the same formula, four into Offlane, and they keep the same bands. They're not allowing General to play on his most comfortable heroes, the Beastmaster and Enigma. And I don't know if Na'Vi was really ready for an instant Timbersaw on kind of a first pick scenario. Therefore, they go for this Ursa. And we just saw on the player cam when the Ursa was picked, DM, he was chuckling. Because Ursa into Timber, yep. it's a very 50-50 matchup because Timber can go Timber Chain and apply pressure. But then Ursa, if he gets a good start with correct yep. supports, he can shut down a Timber. The, the, the yeah. nerfs to Fury Swords as well, they're not nearly as strong level one. So it's not really the same disparity. In addition, you have so much damage threat on Timber. Plus, you can always get away. There's no stun in this lane if there's a Phoenix and Ursa against yeah. Timber. Exactly. What do you think so far, Purge? Yeah, the Phoenix doesn't give me a huge amount of confidence for sure because it's not going to be easy to keep Timber around um, if that does end up being your five position hero. Um, it could still be four though, it's flexible, but I, I just can't help but feel confident with uh, Saves line. It's insanely good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even if he gets a little pressure in lane, he always gets Blink Dagger at a really good time. He uses his skills impeccably every single fight. It just doesn't feel like a lion when he plays it. He's just like unkillable and his disables are always in the right place. Yeah, I wanted to actually shout him out because you know this is a guy I really hadn't heard of until he started playing with his VP lineup. That was an incredible performance. That replay of him avoiding the Slark, surviving, like he had he was 3k net worth against 12k and took three hits from Slark mm -hmm. and he had Ag's defusal. Like that's kind of nuts. Also consider he's hitting his hero first pick every game. This is also the, the only team that at the start of the season, like six weeks ago, they were already picking Lion. They had already identified, hey, this hero good, uh, save on it, even better. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think okay, Fogg mentioned it beautifully in the cast, just the idea of the discipline that you yeah. have on, in like on position four. When you have the, the stun on your team, you need to know who and why you're stunning. And some team uh, players can kind of get a little bit lost in the, in the game, but no, save, he consistently just shows exactly why he needs it's, to uh, initiate. Another. Excellent four and off laner, Zai. The most important thing you need in Dota 2 to succeed is patience. And I believe Save definitely demonstrates that. Love their second phase bans as well in these top tier matches. They're never boring. Makes total sense. You ban the Iceberg Doom. It's the hero he's really looked the best on so far in this league. And then Mars Tide. You already have your off laner. Take out two of really the only tier S remaining in the pool. What's General going to play? I don't know. The interesting thing here is. VP, they, they're not looking at the hero matchups because when you have Timbersaw, naturally you don't really care too much about a Mars or a, t uh, a Tide Hunter. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it's maybe more towards the comfort of general. Mm -hmm. Like even those heroes would be hard countered by Timbersaw, what they bring to the game is still simple. You know, if you arena X hero, they should die. If you ravage a hero, they die if not next to the Timbersaw. Yep. And unfortunately for General, one of his best is just so nerfed. I don't know if you can play it, but a Batrider looks really nice in a game against Timber. But does it still with the nerf? I think an offlane bat still can uh, mm. come into play. I think it's only mid bat that can feel it the most because of the kind of the 1v1 duel of the CS. But yeah. in the offlane, if you have the correct support to enable you in that kind of CSing department, it for sure could still be viable. The only other offlaner that he's played this season in the upper division has been Void Spirit. Mm. Other than the Alchemist, obviously, previous game. Yeah, we can write that off. <laughs> I like the Disruptor here. Uh, definitely gives some kill potential, potentially against Timber. Um, disable, like, combo potential later on is going to be their team fight's excellent. They can definitely kill Save with Disruptor as well. He's pretty squishy, but if you glimpse him back into a connect field, Ursa should be able to kill him, I assume. So I kind of like that as a pivot here. Yeah. Um, when we were talking um, about the Ursa versus Timber song and the, and the chuckle that we saw uh, VP have, um, it was said that Ursa, with the right support duo, would be able to do Yeesh. good. Is this a right support duo to do well against the Timber in lane? Disrupt Ursa? Yeah, it's one of the better ones, but that's a clock off lane. That's one of the general heroes mm -hmm. we're waiting for, um, which means we're saving Iceberg's hero for last. Hello, White Oracle. Is this a Timber Saw? Oh, no, no, Timber Saw. Huskar. 
Incoming. No, no, no it's because not. you already have the, four, the, the, the lion and the orc. Just want to get a car yeah. in. Like, Maybe it's a mid. No, <laughs> Me and T were talking about this backstage, but Iceberg's got to step up mm -hmm. if you're going to see Navi win a game here. They're now giving him last pick, and honestly, he's just got to perform. GPK didn't make mistakes. You know, Iceberg made a couple, and, and that's going to be a disparity here. Like the monkey can I, you know, Oracle MK, if you time it right, and I believe GPK can play it, this will likely be his hero. Yeah. You can mischief the damage from Oracle all popping and survive basically everything. But the key thing here is, wait, go and punch. Does that actually work? That actually yeah, works. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So a key thing here is from the previous game when Slug was jumping these supports, they had to utilize buybacks to really keep get keep themselves in the fights. In this game, because of the Monkey King, especially against Ursa, Clock, and these type of heroes, you just have to stand inside Wukongs. You know, your monkey will indirectly cover your supports now, enabling your fight. And then Timbersaw, he's the hero that's going to be baiting out the fights. But no, I love the fact that Na'Vi are really going back to their kind of big comfort heroes for their players, and it's complete aggression. Like, if yep. they can overwhelm their opponent, this lack of team fight from VP, it yep. is save a monkey king versus the world. And right now, now you ban the two best mixed damage mids left in the pool that could pretty much play the carry and tower pressure mm -hmm. for Iceberg. SF first, probably Death Prophet next, and then I just don't know what you take. Again, they're forcing Navi under these like sub comfort heroes, specifically the people I think you'd want to target, Iceberg in general. And the Monkey King pick is so good there too because it just protects you against so many mid heroes mm -hmm. that your opponents might pick too. So it just feels like a, a great outdraft here so far from BP. I mean, it helps a lot. I'm telling you, this TGov was onto something, but when you go Lion plus Timber Tide, it's really easy to draft from there. You don't have to think about anything, you just pick. And the best thing is, you also see one hero, especially because your first pick. Like the key thing here is underneath the heroes, you see the pick, right? First, second, third, etc. Mm -hmm. But when you are first pick because of the Lion, you get to react to the third hero of Na'Vi's draft. So that's where it kind of, it is just so comfortable drafting in this kind of style. Don't Na'Vi have like lane push issues? Because clock, clock, clock mm -hmm. is a yep. three typically isn't done because you don't sit in the lane much. You need to, you feel like you need to move around to be effective. Ooh. But if he does so, who's going to replace his lane push? A rocket you... player does it, but. Hear me out. Tinker. We're listening. Tinker. It's. Sure. I, ton, you have I have tons a soft of vision. For the hero. Tons of vision. Mm. It activates your disruptor clock. You don't really need as much damage. They ban out Puck. I'm telling you, that tells me something. Death Prophet's the yeah. easy choice, yep. but I agree with Purge because you have issues with lane shoving. You have issues with your late game damage output. And whenever you have like no wave clear and your team fight's a bit weaker, I just feel like the game gets really hard. I guess the team fight's fine, but. They could probably just pivot away from that and just go for like a Lycan or something. There's only a Timbersaw as your answer. It's a Monkey King Timbersaw? Yeah, but like you just run through. You've got the Ursa to cover you. It's the Ooh. idea of just... End. But Na'Vi have clearly shown that they do not care too much about scaling and just yeah. trying to get out of the game at a certain time or like a... a oh, they condition. took it from them, VP. Yeah. They are in their head. However... This is a very good Oracle game now. Yeah, don't, yes. don't like them. That is perfect. Yeah. That is like... Because that's what the... That is the hero Na'Vi yeah. want no, in you, this spot based on their draft uh, history. Pugna's the lad. Oh, yuck. It's, all right. You're just going to die. To you what? Get yeah, kill them all. You die. You kill the DP pre yours. It actually is a very good com uh, matchup. It's not been played too much, but it is. it destroys the DP and the idea of the game and pacing. You it's mentioned mixed damage. This is not Hobson playing here today. Yeah, but uh, Iceberg. I would, you know, gone, Purge? I, I would like Pugna if if we knew that like Ursa isn't farming Battlefield on the back of that. Because mm, okay. I feel like it might be a little too slow. Yep. It doesn't like, I don't know, like it'll be good, but I feel like you need to like, yep. oh, crush the early game, pressure like crazy mm -hmm. with your carry being semi-involved. And Ursa's not going to want to do that. Agreed. If it was like a lone druid, even like a, something like weird, like a Naga yeah. Siren, where you either could double down on pressure or just play as four really aggressively with this crazy hyper carry that at some point would turn things for you. But you can't really pick an illusion core in this game right now. No, you can't pick the spirits that also jump the back line yeah. as well because DP covers you, so... Tinker, so, dude. Do they have to hit the back line? Because between, like, clockwork and glimpse and stuff, I feel like they can't pick That's people true. off in lanes. They got pick seconds. now. Okay. The Queen of Pain. They go for a comfort iceberg here, the Queen of Pain. It's very... It's not as dominant as before. Mm -hmm. uh, Death Prophet just, you know, buy some region. Life's pretty good but it just puts Na'Vi in that position of aggression. Like game one, they're going to have these lanes, they're going to try and collapse the map, but fundamentally, they cannot just make... they not impressed. Yeah. yeah, they're not impressed with that last pick at all. They, they can't They can't make these positional errors on Na'Vi where they send one hero to one side, fight on another, and I think, yeah, just kind of the macro gameplay from Na'Vi has to be so much better from game one. They, they looked somewhat outclassed. What do you think uh, with the final 10 heroes on the board, Purge? 
I, I kind of like Navi's stuff because I, I do see their ability to go around getting pickoffs, but it's going to require uh, always want to fly to not die too much in lane. He classically dies a lot on Disruptor in the laning stage to stabilize his carry. Um, that could hurt their mid game timings. I just feel like BP's draft looks so much easier to execute at all stages of the game. So I think BP's going to win this. All right. Thank you so much. Going back it, to the other game. They somehow have like all the answers. You have Oracle in the safe lane with your Monkey King. It's a Phoenix Clock. Uh, w prevents all damage. It's only because of the heroes that Navi pick aren't like these S tier meta heroes, right? Yeah. You know, they're going for the Phoenix Five. They're going for the off lane yeah. clock. It's like, eh. This, but these are comfort heroes. Like this, this is what holds Navi back, though, because course, these are comfort heroes. I'm not saying they're like lost, but it's an 80-20 outdraft, and it's because yeah. they're choosing comfort over what's best in the game. This is what I criticized. Tundra Four. When we watch EU games. Secret VP. They pick the best heroes for the situation. They Navi have pick... the luxury of having players yeah. that are comfortable in every exactly. situation. I want to see General's Clockwork pop off against yeah. Monkey King. Imagine, you know, you see the flare into the hook shot and you, realistically, this is such a hard game. For it Navi, is. But they, is. You need a little bit I of that, hope. like, IX Mike liquid magic. All right, well, maybe they have that. Maybe they have that when they're they being on the on the comfort heroes. Yeah. Maybe that will work for Navi here in game two. It needs to work for them if uh, they want to force this to a third game. Let's find out if they can together with Odie Pixel and Fog. Let's find out indeed. I mean, that, that, that really is the question, Fog. Coming into this game two, uh, we saw Na'Vi on the game one draft try for some sort of greedy strat all in on the V-Tune Slark. Uh, what do you think of their approach here in uh, what we're seeing from them in game two? Oh, is it going to be any better? Oh, and this is all out of great. Look at General's starting items. That is all I'm going to say. This is They got to just be the most aggressive players on the planet. I think if this game slows down at all, they just literally lose this game. They have to play super clean Dota, super aggressive, and let's see. They're starting it out with the smoke. Oh, let's see if they can get GPK. Does GPK, oh, he's, he's going to be fine. Oh, they're always oh, going to fly. Oh, I say he's going to oh, be fine. Actually, GPK went back in. Whoa, that's what? done, though. That's He's done though. No. Okay, he does okay. still go down. As uh, Navi, well, they got what they came for. They they get first blood. General gets it. That's the quad gauntlets right there, really paying off. You know, and they allowed him to survive. Oh, I love the build. Oh, this, I mean, Navi. You know, as the panel said, they've gone for full out comfort. May not be the best heroes of the patch, but you know what? We're gonna see some fun. I think they're gonna play super aggressive, and I think that's the best way that they have to play versus VP. I think VP really showcased the last game just that they're on another level, really. They just looked so clean, the way that they moved around and danced and just recognized their win conditions so well. Navi's got to cause chaos. And we're going to see if they can in this game. We'll see they're indeed very close to being able to take General down before he got that hit off, but wasn't the case. As they got to, they ran back to base. They have to TP to the lane, so Aris is up here. Immediately got to start getting harassed, though, from the two VP heroes. And is already, as you, as we know, the Timber Saw is going to skill chain. We saw it already earlier. Annie's versus Ursa, so always a pretty good option. The General Clock, man, I haven't seen it in a while. <laughs> they haven't had to bust it out in some time because he's been getting his heroes every single time. But now that we see how hard VP's focused, this poor, poor General, and we'll see what he can do as this clockwork. Oh hell yes! I mean, it, is it a good clock game? Not so much. <laughs> it's okay versus like the back lines to catch the Oracle, but your damage can just be completely negated. And I don't think there's very many games where a, good, a clockwork is a good core hero. No, sure. No, for, we, we don't see it in that position, really. Let's stay. He's got a thousand HP, though. You know, look at that. Look at the item build. <laughs> I love it. I mean, he's t it, you know, it's it's it, it's going to be hard for them to, to kill him in the lane with that Is amount it? of HP to work through. I mean, well, I I guess maybe not when Nightfall has his boots. Yeah. They're they're deceptively really squishy on the bottom okay. lane. One armor Phoenix, two armor Clockwork, and it's a Monkey King. I think this is one of the better lanes Monkey King could be in with the backup of an Oracle too. I think it just it makes it that much stronger. As yeah, I really like the way the VP set up their lanes, and we'll have to see. We'll have to see how much chaos Navi can cause. I think that's really going to have to be the name of the game, especially when they pick, you know, Iceberg. They picked him a comfortable hero like that Queen of Pain, but it is into a lion. So there's always going to be those disables mid-game that he's... It's just unavoidable. Yeah, and we saw how well Safe was playing the lion last game, so... Yeah. He's going to find those catches. Timbersaw is actually beating the Ursa right now in CS just because of this timber chain early level and just the way Save's able to play. And there's the mana drain. It's actually very effective and very obnoxious. 
Disruptor usually wants to be able to spam a little bit more. Saves done a great job of just burn his mana. And down bottom, Nightfall 11 for three, uh, General 11 for one. Though. So that yeah, both both getting farmed down. And we'll see what General does with his farm as the offlane clock. He's getting some bracers online, so he is he is gonna be durable at least, at least in the HP department, not in the armor department for quite some time. But I hey, will see. See that blink quickly. That's why we see this Queen of Pain pick in the game. Not only just because of comfort, because you can actually blink dodge those spirit siphons. And he will have rune control. That's the other thing about the Queen of Pain versus Death Prophet matchup. You can get rotations, you can get rune control, and you can pose better kill threat onto the Death Prophet most of the times, rather than if the DP gets a rotation. Navi has to pull the bottom lane a bit. It's, it is a tough lane still for General. He, I'm actually very impressed that he's gotten up to the 15 already at this point versus Monkey King Oracle. But now they have to res, you know, rely on pulling him. Now we'll see the runes start to get checked out. Roger. Gonna start making his move. And it's also, this is actually interesting to point out, even though Roger is a level 23 Phoenix, it usually actually is always one of five playing it with their drafts. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that is true, actually. But, yeah. Uh, definitely, as you say, still in competent hands here for Roger. As uh, oh, it's top. GPK is going to be able to grab that. Oh, and it's an illusion. Very fortunate versus a Queen of Pain. No more Shadow Strikes for you. Yeah, very unlikely to, to ever really be a situation where I spoke is going to find the opportunity to jump and punish GPK in the lane now. And DM is DM is literally getting away with everything top. He's even bullying the Ursa back without an Orb of Venom. Usually when I see them able to bully, it's because they have Oove and they just like got a good head start. But he's actually bullying Ursa without it. And already up to level 4 V2 and actually has to be a little careful. He has to walk away from the Creep Wave. Never something you want to see with an Ursa versus Timbersaw matchup. I see he can't get a single last hit. He just missed like six or seven under the tower there. VP just running at him made it so that he couldn't actually get a single one of them up there. And DM is being a total nuisance as they'll push them away from the bounty runes. And we see the two illusions from it. GPK deny both bounty runes on the bottom side. So it's VP, two oh, bounty runes for themselves, and Navi zero. Big move coming right. out from him. Yeah. GPK not missing a beat. He is he is looking he is looking to really win today. No mercy. Let's save. He's gonna get trapped here in the field. Term legs, he's still got a stun to go. As uh, always wanna could. fly, trying to kite it out, saves able to turn. He's turning. Oh, he's he gonna get the, the kill. kill. The All fairy right. fire. <laughs> a little bit of XP on the way out, he'll be happy with that. Yeah, well worth it. He gets to reset, gets his, gets himself his golden experience too. And his Timber Sauce is having a fine time anyway, so it doesn't matter if he's on the lane as Vtune. He's only gotten four last hits in the last minute and a half. I mean, we, we can see now, you know, both Vtune and General just not having great times in these side lanes. As we will see save again, just being such, such an annoyance here, coming in and taking that Arcane Rune away from Iceberg. At least, At least uh, they refill the yeah, bottle. They, they get that. But General, he's had to break the, from the lane. He can't actually play the lane anymore as Clockwork. He has to just start moving around looking for these type of kills, which he's not bad against versus the two supports. But this is not what you want your offlaner to doing already. Like, you don't want him to be breaking out of the lane at this point. It's GPK. He's got some siphons to work with. Ooh, Iceberg. Gets the blink off in time. Oh, oh, he does get the lion. Save. All right, okay, save will we'll die, die for that. Okay, I spoke. GPK. All right, they, they're going to get the two there of them. Go. It works out. I hit the kill switch. Nicely Very done nice. there, holding underneath the tower. Every little thing matters too, right? The bottle refill coming into play because he's got the mana to work around, so always want to fly TP coming out big. Yeah, very nice moves. Uh, in a situation where it looked like it was going to go VP's way. And uh, it looked like that, that Sonic way, that only just scratched the lion. That was very, very close. If they if they lose the Queen of Pain there, oh, and I'm I'm already late. That I would have be been rough. like, uh oh, <laughs> VP's got this. <laughs> so they really need to get those type of kills. Keep this aggression going. Keep the chaos going. Just keep catching VP off guard as, I mean, DM is now taking over top lane. Ursa is now jungling. 
That is a huge concern. They even see it now with the ward too. So DM, he's just going to be able to press the issue forward even more. Just, just commit past the tower. Even maybe pull the next wave and just really take this tower so that, you know, Navi's just got oh, iceberg. some problems. It's going to try and make iceberg. moves down bottom. TP's coming in. I should get Kingslayer while I say that. The stun's coming out into uh, the hex. Iceberg, he's going to be in trouble for this one as he goes down for that attempt. And Roger too. They've got a primal spring for him. Oh! Oh! Top tower is under still, that's that's the that's the rotation of your Queen of Pain coming in, feeding their life away towards the Monkey King. And now always want to fly. He will be able to get the glimpse away after the Timber Chain, so we'll be okay. But Tower is going to die. A first failed rotation as a Queen of Pain, and it's all about this game from Navi. It has to be like perfect. They have all about. It's all about the mid game, right? Ursa, Queen of Pain, and Clockwork Cores. If you start having some struggles in this early game, your mid game is going to completely fall apart. Like, Ursa's not gonna be able to join the fights. Queen of Pain is playing versus natural silences and hex, and it's a clockwork core. Has to cause havoc as he's, I mean, he's level four. Oh, and this is, this is not looking good for Navi at all. I mean, how's, how's his build go? How, how many braces are you gonna turn those, uh, the, those uh, gloves into, do you think? <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's all he's getting. All, all he's braces. Just start, he, he can't lane. He can't CS anymore. So he has to just literally be running around and trying to just like counter gank. But now he's playing as a four position, right? So that's why this, this is a big reason why we don't see that clockwork play too much in that off lane is you get relegated as a support and your items don't really progress that much better or anything like that. It's just, yeah, you just get, you kind of just get sacrificed completely for your game. SVP. Very comfortable. Top three net worth. Pressuring two towers. Monkey King free farming. See how Navi responds. GPK. Running in on Always Wanna Fly. I'm nearly finding the kill, actually. Always Wanna Fly having a step right back V-Tune. I've got the stun into the hex. Alrighty. The there Sonic we Wave iceberg. does burst down save, and now they can look to try and turn. They try for GPK. Now they look over towards Kingslayer, but time's been brought for DM to come across. As Iceberg, he's on the run, his blink's still on cooldown. Iceberg's gonna go down. Another move where, I mean, Iceberg, he is getting kills, uh, but, but he's losing his life for them, and the, and the kills are only on supports. It does, oh, and it feels so bad there. They don't even, like, they don't even defend the tower. DM just rotates mid now, and now they have no Sonic Wave to even punish or push this Timber White. He's just gonna walk at them. And now it's Monkey King also free farming bottom. This is just all going VP's favor. As General, he just wants to join the fray. He's level five. He's feeling a little bit strong now on this clock, but Dyer's tower's gone. Tower has fallen. I mean, the, the, and the question is, we, we've sort of seen it in both of these games here from Na'Vi. They, they, they've clearly brought something rather different to the table. Yeah. You know, they, they, they've felt that they had to, to go and try something that would maybe catch VP by surprise. Do you, do you think maybe they were sort of undervaluing themselves in this matchup? Could Na'Vi have played a, a more standard sort of draft in, in, in the series and, and had, had a good shot? Or do you think at the end of the day, they, they do have to, to try something very different because VP is just that bit better? Well, VP just took them out of their comfort zone, right? They just banned the Beastmaster Enigma that they've played sure, like think, all yeah? season. Okay. And then they just pick the Timber Saw and then they ban the Mars. And then it's like, what do you pick for a general? He had no heroes left. Then they ban out most of Icebergs as well too, the Doom as well as that Invoker. I think VP just really did their homework and it yeah. feels like Navi, they're just, they're, they're, they're a step behind. They're just really a step behind VP uh, who is just prepared on all elements. And very, very uh, open to play pretty much anything. These guys, they don't, they don't mind if they just like switch a role, switch a hero, something like that. Panel was talking about how they're all just comfortable playing everything. While Navi, they've only shown a couple strategies, and it really feels like VP's just kind of playing around that. As I don't know where Navi, I don't know when Navi really hits their timings. Like Iceberg, he's so far behind at this point. He, he has to have Sonic Wave to make any successful rotations. And I just, I love the way that VP set up this draft where all three cores are probably the three best cores you could have with Oracle. All benefit from False Promise super hard, so you can't actually pressure wherever the Oracle is. So we'll see as Navi, they're gonna have to sit back and try to get some farm up, but farming into this VP game, you know, VP, it feels like you're playing into their hand. Roger still quite not level six on the Phoenix either. So that's one thing that could maybe bail them out in some situations, the two big ults that come out from these two supports. 
if they can try to get a positional advantage. VP just, they never give them that. As we saw the last game, they're very good at identifying when they should pressure, when they should sacrifice the support and stuff like that as it's looking similar. Four to six, 11.30. Maybe they can catch save. He's pretty far up. Okay, this should be an easy one. They're gonna drop the Static Storm down. Make sure that they can guarantee a kill, give Vichin that bit of a boost to, to get his Battle Fury done. He needs it. Anything he can get. Roger Bottom. Can't quite take him out there. Now we'll see how much Nightfall's farm's going to explode now that the Maelstrom is complete. I mean, Vichin is still farmed. Like, it's going to be a question of, you know, how much can the Ursa pull off in this sort of game? Like, is he playing against a, a lot of counters to his hero? Yep, that yep. Prophet Yules, it's gonna be annoying. There's the controls, the disarms, the dispels as well from the Oracle can even be obnoxious as the or as they're saying. You just don't have, you're not ready. You're gonna take a very long time to get involved. You know, even after Battle Fury, you don't want to fight. You want that next item to be able to join in. VP, they're gonna start really kicking up the tempo. Death Prophet's about to have Yules, so he has that natural counter versus Ursa at all times too. Let's see what he can get here. It just feels like phone. Just like Clockwork and Queen of Pain cores. If they're not making a lot happen in these phases of the game, you know, that 8 to 20 minute mark, they just effectively fall behind. They just effectively fall off. That's just the nature of the heroes. Top tower is under attack. As they swing top, 13 minutes. Exorcism DM can just tank this tower. So they can actually, they can look to take this. And then they'll be able to deny the outpost and it forces Navi's hand to maybe go fight. Maybe Navi can. They have all their ults. So this is when they are very strong. Sonic Wave, the Egg, the Disruptor ult as well, Static Storm, and everything with General coming in and maybe getting a good catch. So let's see if they can look to fight around this tower Dyer's as the Death Prophet ult is ending. DP getting into a position around their Monkey King. They're going to get a glimpse. Get the glimpse. Uh, they'll catch King Slayer. It's a big catch. Um, I mean, going to turn across, get the stun opening onto Iceberg. Iceberg, Iceberg is going to die for that attempt. General comes up with the side of the hook shot with the Battle of Strikes down from Nightfall. I do manage to get that supernova off. VP are having to kite it out to the side. As the stun comes out, but Safe's already away. The Wukong's come on now down. The Sonic Wave will push back the three of them, pushes Nightfall out of the ult. A DM, he's still good to go. He's chasing down Vichy and with the Chakram, DM's gonna be able to get the kill. He takes down the Ursa. See what DM and Nightfall can do here. Does Iceberg wanna poke any further? He did buy back here, so he's gotta be careful. Quick blink out away from the boundless strike of Nightfall. So now they, 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 they get some kills in return, but still they're having to use Iceberg's buyback and they're losing V-Tune. Yep, they lost V-Tune and it's, it's all the way on their side of the map. So they can't actually, they can't really turn this into anything either as they've had to use absolutely everything, including a buyback. And it feels like that buyback was absolutely necessary as they wouldn't have gotten, you know, they wouldn't have gotten like any kills if Iceberg didn't do that. As VP, very prepared for the fight. They reset the positioning of it to play around their Monkey King. Although they lose Kingslayer at the start, they still somehow end out in a good position in the fight. Now it's Nobby coming together with everything. All their ults. And still unable to, to break down this lead that VP has against yeah. them. And their, their, their lineup is about early game, so if they're not commandingly winning these big fights at this point, it doesn't feel like it's going to progress into anything else. At least they have stacks. So v he has some Ancient stacks and some Hard Camp stack. But now this downtime, it feels like it plays again. Still into VP. They just, they, they're comfortable. Their lineup, it scales really well as Navi's, it does not scale that well. Only the Ursa really does scale that well, as well as, I guess, the Phoenix. But you want your other core heroes to scale in comparison as VP, all three scale super nicely. We'll see if Na'Vi want to tackle the, the potential fight in the top lane again. Or if they'll let this tier two go. They have a good ward up, at least, all the way in that top north side, the Tinker Ward, to at least watch the Oracle's positioning. So maybe they could still be catching Kingslayer. But GPK, he's got level two exorcism. VP wants this tower pre-20. Well, they're gonna get it. And they're gonna get it. And they're saving exorcism. Right, so do, I, do they knock on the base or do they just swing for another tier two? Maybe just swing for another tier two. Now they could go another tier two, they could, they could go for Roche. I've got uh, plenty of options here, VP. Yep, and there's the outpost, Kingslayer is grabbing it. Let's 
see what Nabi, this is gonna be such a late orchid on Iceberg. They're gonna be probably getting close to the BKBs on the two main core heroes. Actually, Nightfall's not even going for it. He's going SNY. He's going much more greed. And they're setting up a rush. So Exorcism plus DM tanking it. They can do this with full HP. Yeah. And nah. Navi, they do have everything ready, but fighting into this pit, that gives VP the opportunity to catch the heroes running in, which makes it a lot harder. Yeah, it's pretty impossible. But yeah. To turn up and here. Kingslayer's Shadow Hamulated on the side, too. So they wouldn't even be able to find him if they did jump into the fight. There we go, Aegis on Nightfall now. So not only having to try and deal with Kingslayer ready to save him in the middle of the action, I've got to take him down twice. This is uh, still a, a tough game for General. Still yeah. uh, lagging behind quite a bit here. Not much he can do here, you're, you're you know, three position clockwork. You can't show in lanes, you can't farm. You have to just get farmed through kills. And he's only found, you know, the two and the two assists as well. This VP. No, this move is coming. DM plays very defensively. Even cutting himself all the way back, not even wanting to walk through the lane in case he gets caught behind the tower. That's a good read. That was yep. smoked rather close. And the other two, the other two core heroes, they're playing, no, I've been saying this a lot recently, but it's the buddy system. You know, you have your, one of your supports sitting behind you when your other hero is showing. So even if they look to make moves on the other side, your support might just tank the gank for that opposing core. So splitting up their resources as well, and Navi, unable to find anything, besides just putting down a nice aggressive ward at least. That's the Orchid done now. But as you say, it's, it's, a, it's not a quick one. It is a slow, no. slow timing this game. Top not that bad, though, for how many deaths it feels like Iceberg has had. Sure. 18 minutes isn't that bad. Does feel like VP is already pretty prepared for it. It's already setting up for the next tower. Push mid, an arcane rune at the ready inside a GPK's bottle. Ult back up in 15 Radiance seconds. And Nightfall pushing away at the tier one on his own down bottom. Top tower. Probably just trying to slow it down, but won't quite be able to as he will be able to finish off that tower and save. He's trying to finish up the blink. They don't have the easiest ways of initiating still on the side of VP. They kind of just have to walk into the fights, but he's going to have it any minute now. And we've seen what we saw what he was able to do last game with that blink. And now he's playing versus a hero without Dark Pact. You know, Queen of Pain, a very easy target to just immediately go for with those blink hexes, blink stuns. As the scan is successful, Iceberg. Is he going to stick around for these two creeps? Oh, no, he's sticking around. He's sticking around for them, and that'll cost him. Successful scan from VP has always won a full... Oh, okay, he gets away. But yeah, successful scan from VP gets them that kill as they swing across the map. Just went, no, went. that's a long death. Yeah. That was the buyback, right? That was the buyback yeah. death, so it's 50 seconds without a Queen of Pain. Extra time where he's just not able to, to have the impact that he needs to as a quap with this Orchid brush. And now it feels late, right? Because now it effectively is like a 21-minute Orchid when he responds in GPK. He'll nearly have that BKB done. Yeah, he's got Yules, he's got BKB, he's got an Oracle behind him. DM's yeah. pretty much got a Lotus Orb. Yeah, that, that, that Orchid doesn't feel too great anymore. Nope. And he hasn't even gotten, he hasn't even gotten to use it yet. It's still hanging on to the Exorcism. Since they're, they're just pushing it without having to use it, they're saving it for the fight. Or for the next opportunity of play. As we see mid, they're cutting the creep wave on Vtune, but I mean, he's getting stunned up. Safe. He's able to set up. They get in, Vtune, he pops the BKB, he's going for the TP out with the Enrage. Oh my goodness, he makes it away. And that is the blink reveal, General. I did have to cancel his TP. I was going to say, he's not going to be able to do anything here against DM. As, uh, okay, he can get out with the hook shot. Always want to fly by his side to give him something to jump to. They're going to chase. They have the other two cores connecting. DP and Monkey King were thinking about starting to jump over. Glimpse is but still on cooldown. And and Ooh, he's in. DM, can he get anything else out of this, Roger? He's out of the map, back over towards mid nightfall. He's able to trap feature in the old. BKB, BKB and Enrage is still on cooldown. He's got to get out of here. The Static Storm has to be laid down to, to stop Nightfall from chasing. 
No glimpse him, but he, he's got the Aegis still for 30 seconds. Iceberg at least able to get himself another kill. Get used to his Orchid. Oof, V2 lucky to get away though. I think he probably just stepped up and got like stunned and comboed from save. Lucky to get out with his life as his BKB will be back up in five seconds. But VP, they've gotten so much time now to just back away and just sit back, farm, finish up all these items to counteract, as you say, versus that Orchid. That BKB nearly done on Nightfall, BKB nearly done on GPK, and Lotus Orb is finished on DM. So they've got the answers already. A lot of this now, just Navi on V Tune to, to carry them out and be that, that force off. that can jump and and take out a target at the start of the fight. He is still very farmed. He's up there with Nightfall. But a lot rests on, on what he's able to do in these fights. He's got it. Yeah, he's really got to do so much. Has to find the Oracle. Same thing for the Queen of Pain. They have to get to the back lines to be able to take out those annoying supports. And then they do have hopes inside the fight. DM is still a big issue, though. I don't know how they're going to kill this Timbersaw unless he's like full out isolated. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And he's having such a good game. From the lane. Whenever you have the, like, this type of game versus an Ursa lane too, right? He's 4-0 yeah. and 490 last hits. He bullied the Ursa out of lane. VP, get an aggressive ward down, and now they're looking to smoke. They send the Monkey King top, and then they're going to go try to back him up. They also get a successful scan, and he has BKB. So they are very ready to fight. And so does GPK. Oh man, yeah, double BKBs. Now the Egg, the Disruptor, the Clockwork, even the Queen of Pain just almost fully addressed. These fights for Na'Vi. Yeah, v has to just pop off in the back line somehow. Does not feel easy. Maybe Na'Vi can catch the back lines off guard here with this smoke. Oh, G GPK has another Arcane rune. I swear, he's always getting Arcanes. Oh boy. Even has the Essence String too, so he pops that before walking up the high ground. So he's just effectively tankier from that max HP increase. Navi, they, they're not finding him. And we'll see DM now. Radiance Courier. Uh, at least Another smoke from VP though. They've got this big timing with double BKBs. They really want to show it. Radiance they really want to bring it to Navi. As Iceberg is split away from his team. Oh. They're uh, going to be able to find always want to fly. It's in the best interest to get everyone else out of there, but the boundless strike from Nightfall catches onto generally. Oh. Will manage to hook shot over towards the mid wave. And that, that will keep him alive. So I'm getting able to run while well, I say that. Actually, yeah, Nightfall just able to, to just swing across the map, closing the gap. And uh, despite the, the, the strong attempt with the hook shot to escape, BP are able to run him down and kill him off anyway. They're so quick with the way they're making the moves. You know, they smoke to make one, one swing across the map, a secondary smoke to get onto their high ground. And yeah, Iceberg, he wasn't there. So immediately Navi, they just know they have to bail away. Iceberg at least has farmed his BKB, so he'll have some protection if he's able to get it off before the oh, man. Hex comes Save. out. Save! He's got the Hex into the finger. They're giving everything to Vichy and Zerster. Zerster. Oh, he's able to get the BKB and the Enrage off, but only just. The Static Storm's down on a Kingslayer and save as they will get the two supports in return. My goodness, was that close. They nearly lost V-Tune. At least they get, at least they get two, two trade kills there. That's pretty nice. And they do get V-Tune out. So Anything, close, like, Any small type of thing for Na'Vi is good, but yeah, so close, he nearly does go down. As we're seeing, you know, you might have magic immunity, but the chain stun is absolutely there from VP. And once they find that opening, they, they don't mess up the follow of VP. No. And now they, they didn't have exorcism for that attempt there. Now GPK here will have it up again, since he did use it with an arcane rune last time. And Navi, they don't have any ults. And Roche has respawned v -tun. In the area of it, he's actually going to start it. Oh, an instant pause. All right, well. Do you know what that means? Packet, oh, packet I think it means okay. packet loss. Uh, Thank you, on. Thank you, excellent translation. Oh, yeah, save said it as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, what a coincidence. Okay. Packet loss here for VP. Um, they don't have any vision over on Na'Vi's half of 
the map. I mean, do you think they're going to suspect this uh, this Roshan? Yeah, bottom yep, lane's pushing in, mid it. lane's pushing in. Yeah, I think they're, they absolutely know this is going on. And then the question is, can Na'Vi stick around for it? Or uh, do you think we're going to see so. them sort of run as soon as they get a sight of VP coming in? I, I think they've got to run. They don't have Ag. There's no way they win a fight without Ag. No, no Sonic Wave. They, they literally have, like, no ults up at all. This is, I think this is a pretty ambitious attempt at the rush. I really think that VP is expecting this. And they have everything at the ready. They're trying hard to kill it fast. The BKB is up now, at least from VTune. They get the successful scan on the, scan on the high ground. VP, maybe they aren't aware. Can yeah, Na'Vi. I mean, that's a, that's a big objective to get there. VP not, oh, got a cheese. not stopping it. Yeah, Aegis and cheese yeah. for Na'Vi. Not bad, not bad. Is that the Basher as well, too? Yeah, VTune, he's got a Basher, too. So he is, he's doing pretty decent. His other cores, really struggling, but he at least is having a good time. Let's see if he can do he it. There's a lot to go through. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant are scanning. There's Navi. Setting up to, to make a move here. Beachune leading the way. Lots of BKBs and Kingslayer is in position. Oh, oh, oh! Hook, hook shot misses, and that'll be the, the smoke revealed. Yeah. And they see Vtune. They have a ward on the high ground here. DM. He's gonna start on him. Set up with the Yules. He instantly pops the Enrage to, to try and escape, but the Yules will hold him back. He's got to put the BKB as well to run Static Storm used defensively. Is they're just having to. To get out of it, Na'Vi. Always want to fly. He's not making it out. Boundless Strike puts the TP to an end. Uh, 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 very much a, a whiffed attempt there from Na'Vi to get something going. General just not, not able to find the angle. Uh, and, and from that moment on, it was all a little bit over the place from Na'Vi. It feels like it maybe was fortunate that he didn't, though. The Oracle was completely in position. His whole team was at the backup. That could be a really disastrous position for Na'Vi to fight. Around the tree lines there with Monkey King, too. Maybe it was a little lucky that they didn't connect that hook. It's VP, they looked super ready for it. Now General, he's shown himself in the lane. Can he TP out? Again. Well, VP now in position to bring around this bottom wave. About to level 20 on two. Nightfall. He's got uh, Ags now oh, as well. Oh, oh. oh baby. GPK not quite level 18. Just a little bit shy of it after this wave. Still tough. It's just hard for Navi to fight because they don't have. The thing is, they don't have these similar forms of lockdown. They have these good ways of team fighting with Static Storm and Egg, and you know, getting some maybe some catches like that. But they don't have the stuns. That is really what's making it so hard. And that just means that it's guaranteed for VP that they're gonna get their BKBs off in the fight. It's just it's really tough for them to actually control these targets. So they're gonna have to be really perfect with the way they do jump somebody. They don't want it to be DM, as he will break that smoke. Oh. Oh. He misses the timber chain, but uh, I don't and think he don't cares. Him. Yeah, DM's just going to turn, and he's going to take out Always Want to Fly. We'll see over to the side. General and Iceberg. Iceberg popping the BKB. He's going to blow the Sonic Wave onto Kingslayer. The egg? Kingslayer's still alive. Right the egg's just going to get taken out as it's positioned right by Nightfall. Kingslayer, he's going to be back up to full HP. They blew the Sonic Wave on him, but they didn't quite kill him as he got the False Promise uh -oh. off. The Wukongs is down as General's gone. Vtune is enraged, kited up by the Yules. He'll try and jump out, but he's down the once. VP, they're going to be able to set up to do it again. As oh. Na'Vi, they cannot get across to help him out. Vtune goes down. A full disaster by Na'Vi as the fight is just on two different sides. The Egg... Roger jumps up, puts the egg right next to the Monkey King who is stuck on the high ground. They're like literally right next to him. They all just die. And just the, the follow-up exorcism and Wukong's just sealing the deal on top of the Ursa. v having no hope when he's isolated like that. We're seeing just all the power of VP's draft coming together and Navi's, you know, the timing, it's it's long past. Yeah, I, I guess what, Roger, was he not aware that Nightfall had ended up on the cliff? No, he was, so he was Sunray burning him up on the cliff to okay, make sure that he yeah. couldn't hop down. And then he just, he had to commit because the uh, Boundless Strike came down. And I think Timbersaw was on top of him. So he just committed the dive and it was, he just ended up next to the Monkey King. He was very likely dead anyway, no matter sure. where he placed the egg, but it just looked funny because he did it right on the cliff right <laughs> next to the Monkey King. Uh, Nightfall, uh, yeah, certainly going to be happy with that. I mean, still, 
going unscathed for this game. 2 0 10 Nightfall. They haven't managed to kill him. Didn't kill him the last game either. He could end this whole series yeah. without a death. Looking very, very well done here by VP yet again. Butterfly. Already about halfway done for Nightfall as his next item. They're just they're really good at just identifying like their strengths and weaknesses in like certain aspects of the game and when they should sacrifice people. Like I'm looking this game, save he's got eight deaths. Kingslayer has three. That's eleven of the fourteen deaths. You know, that's Navi, they're not getting the kills they want. They're not killing core heroes. And it's very similar to the last game where we saw the exact same thing happening. VP always sacrificing these supports and these positions and the cores just always survive. And they get these cleanups and they just make the game look kind of easy in a way, the way they dance around Navi's attempted plays. They just are very aware of the map. And now they're going to smoke. They're looking for the head-on fight. DD in the bottle of Nightfall. Smoke will be broken. A lot of pings coming out. I mean, Navi, they, they don't want to jump this. Unless they're completely sure of the position of VP support. They can't be the ones jumping anymore. It feels like they have to just do full defensive plays. It has to be like the egg all the way in the back. and it just It feels so hard for them to take any of these fights. These VP supports now at this point have had very good positioning. I see Kingslayer just spamming Shadow Amulet the whole time on himself too to be able to hide. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. And fun things to point out, too, is you know, GPK, he's been holding it for a while now, but he has Elven Tunic. So, you know, people always talk about the evasion and everything. It's movement speed, too. Look at this Death Prophet's move speed. You know, he's not only very good with that evasion versus Ursa, but he's also super speedy, and he finds himself yet another Arcane Rune in the game. His fourth or fifth, maybe even sixth Arcane Rune that he has found. I'll beat you, what's his... What's going to be the big item that's going to turn things around? MKB. Make that a rapier. I think so. I think you I need really to. feel like he needs uh, it. It, it. It feels like he's just games. alone in this game. There's 15k down now against VP. VP. I mean, this is, you know, the, 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 this is what you want to see from VP performance wise, you know, towards the end of this league going in from, from what will be this top position towards the major. You know, th th this is this level of play that, that is the reason why why a lot of the, the fans are very excited to see what VP is going to do on an international stage. 100%. They've been, like, they've been so clean. And Navi have had a couple, some absolutely beautiful games, right? They they've had some really clean games where they've stopped, but they've also had a lot of these dicey games where they've, it's been really back and forth and they've just, you know, even dropped some games to teams that they didn't think they would. But VP, they've not shown that. They've not shown any slip-ups. And even Nightfall. Okay, this was kind of cool. So he bought a Quarterstaff. So we see that Ursa queues up MKB. He sells Quarterstaff, buys a full Scotty. Now Ursa's going MKB just to deal with an Elven Cloak of a Death Prophet. Damn. He's debating. I mean, well, in that situation, you definitely want to be getting a Rapier instead. Whoa, okay. Bound the strike, going to be off the mark. Always want to fly. He's out. No, he's not. DM's no, he's in. Not. He's got the Yules. And they'll get themselves the kill. DM continues his godlike streak over towards the mid iceberg. Uh, he's going to put the BKB, but he can't blink out in time. That's... And he has no buyback. He just spent his gold on Shiva's. Wait, no, he didn't. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. All right. Well, that's a Rax. That's at least a Rax. There's no Queen of Pain here for a minute. For any sort of final fight, potentially from Narvi as VP. I get in this mid racks here. Fortification will be popped, but especially once they realize that Iceberg's not coming back, they are not going to stop sieging the base They're of Na'Vi. Sure. They'll yep. swing straight up towards the top lane. Oh, the glimpse. All they right. Slow down Nightfall a little bit, but... A oh, minor inconvenience. Yep. Slightly annoying. V2, you know what the saddest thing is, Owen, honestly? The fact that they still have the cheese on Na'Vi from when they got the brush earlier. They just haven't even had a chance to use it versus VP. I haven't. VP's just not allowed them many opportunities to fight. Nope. And they're going to get the tower. Queen of Pain's going to start respawning, and they're immediately going to back and go for that Roche. As we will see, it's spawning in about a minute. They've got more than enough time, and 
There's no way Navi can fight around that pit, as we've seen. VP, they're just playing this one super methodical, super clean, looking to make no more mistakes. Yeah. Let's go. Let's see. Seen Aghanim's dropped and picked up by save. That's what we want. That's, <laughs> the, that's how you finish in style here if you're VP. Dude, GPK has a heart. Oh, my God. They can't kill anybody. They will never kill a core. The rapier. They need the rapier. It's the only way for VTune. Sell that javelin. Hey, sell the sell the damn cheese. Sell the cheese. Honestly, sell the I actually was take that same cheese thing straight on. to market. I honestly think they need it. They really just need to get it. How much does go for nowadays? You get what, 500 gold? 500. 500 yep, gold? It's always been 500. Same thing. Hey, refresher shard is also 500 gold, by the way. Oh, yeah, I always forget that you can sell a refresher shot. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Well, I don't know why you can. A tip for I your really pubs, ladies they... and gentlemen. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's always that annoying item. You know, there's always a support that wants it. <laughs> they, they won't notice if it's gone. Just take, <laughs> run, run it to the shop. MKB is done. BP oh. just chasing. The and they're hopping the egg. I've got the hook shot in. But they're hitting the egg down. They're going to be able to take it away. Nightfall getting a little low, but he's able to get the Wukong's command off as General dies. Inside of the Ottoman, Vichu will pop the beak, pop the cheese, but he's gonna die as soon as he's eaten it. As they have killed, they get knife for the one. The Monkey King, but there's four dead. There's soon to be five here. With Iceberg also caught out to the side, he can't get out. Five dead, all without buybacks. It's over. GG is over. called, and VP they'll take this game, and with that, the series 2-0 against Navi here today, Fulton. I mean, my goodness, they look, they, good. they, they, look, they look very, very good. I cannot yeah. wait. I cannot wait to watch this team versus like Secret versus IG and everything on the international stage. Absolutely. They look really impressive. And the thing is that they've done it with a lot of different various types of drafts and a lot of different like quirky stuff. You know, they busted out the jungle, Huskar. They've destroyed their opponent's attempts. Enjoy, and just, it's such an enjoyable team to watch when they're just making it very little mistakes and when they do make the mistakes they're not that costly you know they're giving up some support kills and stuff like that this is a really really fun team to watch and i really look forward to seeing them on the big stage yeah, absolutely yeah. an incredibly disciplined squad and, and right up to these final moments you know this, this last series and all uh that there was it was pretty much flawless you know that it's sort of the kills the moves that navi were being able to make there was always something else that the vp were doing that was just that that little bit greater in trade and and as you say and as i'm sure everyone at home will be looking forward to cannot wait to see what vp has in store on the international stage but there we go ladies and gentlemen with with all all these wins uh, there's no doubt about it. VP, uh, flawless amongst the, the series, winning every series here in the league. They will secure themselves, uh, ladies and gentlemen, at Verdish Pro, your champions of the ESL Upper Division CIS.